I hate it when this thing turns off. It has got a habit. George Chacal, who died July 31st, 1892, age 50. Then we've got William King. Or there's a, a name of William King. I can't quite read the name of the woman, but the beloved wife of William King. She died in 1895, age 28. And through there, I'll just take another picture of Maria as we go along. I'm just trying to see if I can see any more of those style graves because that's a good indication. And here we got Albertus I. Albertus Bertie, uh, Bertie, the beloved son of William and Rosina King, who died August 11th, 1895, in his sixth year. He shall gather them lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom. Also, Bertram H. King, who died May the 28th, 1906, aged four months. So that's two little, two little boys, two little brothers, maybe. We'll come back to those, or should we do them now? Do them now, Shell. Just oh, here we've got a Frederick Petit. We've got Petit somewhere in the family, age 955, died in 1894. These, these a lot of people here died in 1894 and 1895. Here's a could be a relevant one. Here we've got a Robert Frost who died January the 11th, 1895, aged 47. Also, John Frost, who died 1838, no, born 1838, died April the 11th, 1913. We've got Frosts in the family, you see. So I need to make a note of that. John Griffin, died in Macclesfield. And Mary Ann, his wife. David Mayers. Emily, wife of David Mays. She died in 1896, age 72. And David, he died in his. 1917, age 93. I'm making a note of all the names, most of them, because the thing is, a lot of people, there's a small village. George Cave Bullen, that sounds familiar. He fell asleep May the 9th, 1918, age 58. That name sounds familiar. Doesn't it? There's some more here. I don't know. I don't recognise any of these. But you see, they can surface in the family. Can they? Yeah. Because people from other parts of the family can actually marry people. To check the key, push it down deep. It's a pity we haven't got the zips in these, isn't it? It's very important to do the old ones first, isn't it? Is that another frost over there? Yes, we've got another Frost. Oh, and another Wesley. We'll do the Frost first. Charles Frost died October the 27th, 1898. Age 50-something. And other people also died in 1902. So take another picture, Sheila. It's a Frost. 
Oh, here's a Warren. Betsy Warren. Isaac, the beloved husband of Betsy Warren, who died August the 6th, 1897, age 71. Also Betsy. The wife of the above, who died November the 24th, 1908, age 85. I got a feeling that... They were related as well. Mays. Yeah, we did that one, didn't we? David Mays. You just want to do these when you're here, Jill. Oh, Jarvis. Sarah Ann, wife of George Jarvis of Exon, who died January the 9th, 1910, age 68. Oh, so George Jarvis, who died March 9th, 19, looks like 15. I got a feeling that name rang a bell somewhere. More Unwins. I take pictures of some of them. Some are facing a different way. I don't know why that is. Ooh. There's another Wesley over there. Oh, we've got a Charles Elsden. I'm always doing the Elsdens. Who died May the 13th, 1907, aged 57. Father, in thy gracious keeping, leave me now, thy servant sleeping. Also, Marianne Elston, wife of the above, who passed January the 13th, 1925, aged 72. And Agnes Mary Elsden, their beloved daughter, who died March the 17th, 1953, aged 61. It's been a nice blue day. We've been able to see a lot more, so there's some hidden in there, look. Cooper in there. Oh, pictures. We've got pictures in the family somewhere. 
John Ray Pitches, who fell asleep October 26, 1913, age 72. Absent from the body, present without the Lord. Also of Jane, the beloved wife of the above, who fell asleep February the 28th, age, in 1929, age 85. There's a Jeffrey over there, Fritz Altoff Jeffrey. That's that one there. I'm sure there was a Henry. Yeah. Hmm. Just take a picture of it anyway. Maybe it was John. Yeah, we've done those, we've done those. I'm sure Zara and I did these. Oh, morning. Let me just turn off for a minute and get the, some of the grass out of my socks. Right, another musk, everyone. In loving memory of our dear mother, Emily Musk, who fell asleep January the 8th, 1919, aged 72. Peace, perfect peace. Also, Louisa Flossie Beevor, the adopted daughter of the above. Died March the 14th, 1931, age 26. I don't know if there's any underneath. Here's another musk grave. And with the same pattern of grave. Same pattern. So that's three, three graves now. I'm gradually working my way around and I'm also taking pictures of all the um, war graves. Lydia Carter, she died 1917, age 63, and Charles Carter, he died 1920, age 72, together, it says. I also got some, I took some pictures of musk sausages from the butchers, it was closed. They're a called tenant, but they sell musk sausages that are made somewhere in Exxon, but not, not in, the, in the shop. They're made in like a little factory somewhere, or a place where they process them. They told me that, but they sell the musk sausages, and the hotel I'm staying at also use musk sausages. They go back a long time. I'm going to purchase some. They open at 8 in the morning. They're not open today, but they told me they'll be open Monday and Tuesday. And I'm going to buy some, hopefully Tuesday morning, before I take off and leave. I'm going to buy some. I'm going to... If I'm back in time tomorrow, I might buy them and put them in the fridge overnight. It depends when I get back, really. But there is musk sausages. I've taken pictures of them through the butcher's window. And the butcher now is called Tenant. And they're in the new shopping precinct. They're no longer in the high street. 
we've got images and pictures of the old musk shop somewhere in the high street but they've there's been a, obviously with a lot of towns now um, redevelopment they build these shopping centers that house everything they all pay the same rates under the same roof So, there we got a musk grave. There might be more yet, don't forget, and there will be more under the ground, don't forget that. And I've got a feeling we might have some in the churchyard. When I go to the churchyard after here, I think I might find some. Small break now. Small break while I take my coat off. So it's been very fruitful, hasn't it, folks? We've got all, we just, it's not a huge graveyard. I've got this to do now, and then I'm going to the Church of St. Martin, which might be open all day if we're lucky.